welcome back to another one for Code Vein. This is part three, and we're going into the dried up trenches. So, yeah, we're jumping straight in. So, first of all, come around here, and on the right is a Lost Shard medium. And follow the corner around, and you'll find a Frisian cartridge. You can ignore that item there. And then, once you come along here, guys, look out for a sort of path below you can drop down to. And as you drop down, there'll be an enemy waiting. Quickly dash past him and then come in here and get that rotten missile. And then you can carry on back along the path and you'll come to a ladder. You can climb up. Yeah, this part is 40 minutes long. A little bit longer than what I wanted it to be. Sometimes when I'm recording these, I don't realise how long it's going to be. Uh, but going forward, I'll probably try to keep these at 30 minutes long. Uh, up here, guys, there's a Dark Seeker Vestige Part B times 1. And a Awake MJ109. Make sure you get that. Come in here, drop down to this ledge below. The enemies no, don't normally follow you when you drop down a ledge, by the way, or when you climb a ladder. And around, around here, guys, is a chest. The chest contains a broadsword, plus three. Plus three is the upgrade level, of course. Yeah, I'll be looting all chests going forward. You know, like, like I said in the last video, just so we've got plenty of equipment to play with if we need to or if you want to experiment yourself and then once you drop down from there guys it'll bring you back here and I'm going to carry along the path but instead of dropping down we're just going to run past it this time yeah I almost went past a turn yeah, even I get lost sometimes yeah so grab this item that's a inhibit cartridge times three. And then this one's important. It's an elegant fountain pen times one. Pick that up. And then roll through these crates, guys, to break them. And then just pass them as a secret ledge you can drop down to. Drop down here, then you should be safe for a moment and you can heal up if you need to. Up here is a queen iron times one. And up here, guys, you've got another rotten missile to purify. Purify that and then roll back. If you get knocked off down that ledge, you're going to have to come back here. But yeah, come back here and drop down. Careful this enemy doesn't knock you off. And grab that regen activation factor times one. I was very lucky there. I went a bit too close to the edge. You might want to um, roll past him first, lure him away from the edge, and then go and pick up the item. But you want that item. You also want this chest. Raven fatigues, plus three. You, know, you always want them regen factors, guys. They increase your um, like your healing ability. And then climb this ladder. Great. And um, here, guys, it's blood cartridge times three. Yeah, carry on along here, guys. And you'll get another awake MJ109. Always, you always want them awakes, guys. They're coming very handy for um, maximum proficiency on certain gifts. Now you drop down this another secret led, ledge, and there'll be a chest here, guys. And in there, you've got a knight spear plus three. Come along here, and before you drop down, there'll be another item. Another awake MJ109. Why are they called awakes? Yeah, and then come down here, guys. There'll be a save point very soon. So if you just hold on a bit longer. Yeah, see the item there? You don't want the item, but it's a path you can drop down to below there. I guess that item is like... Not very good. I guess they put that there just to make you run to that edge so you can see that there's a secret path below. Uh, but you come along here, guys. Be careful. These are strong enemies. Roll into these crates to grab the item. Awake MJ018. And then loot this chest. In that chest is a riot breaker plus three. And carefully come back here. Hopefully, you didn't take any damage. If you're worried about coming here where I just got that chest. You might want to go around to this nearby save point first. Yeah, the save point's just around the corner, guys. Yeah, if you don't want to loot that chest yet, just come around here, trigger the save point, and then if you do die, you're just going to spawn back here. It's really close. Yeah, then you can rest at that missile. There you go. And then get this item next to it, guys, a queen iron. And then climb this ladder. There'd be some items at the top of the ladder. Yeah, you might want to use that regen activation factor just so it's used and it gives you an extra healing ability. 
I think the ac activation factors increase how much you heal. And there, guys, is a map town of sacrifice. Make sure you get it. And also get that one. Powerful spices, that item. Yeah, the activation factor increased how much you heal. And the extension factor increased how much you have. Or it might be the other way around, something like that. Uh, but there, guys, see anti slow times three. Come around this corner. Now, you see them crates ahead. I had to edit it because I forgot this item. Them crates ahead, you roll into them, and there'll be an item inside. This one here. Yeah, that's a Dark Seeker Vestige Part A. Like I said, I had to edit that out. I forgot I had to come back. And then drop down this ledge here, guys, and grab the Awake MJ109. Just rewind that if you didn't quite catch what I was doing. But it was a little poor set anyway when I made the edit. Make it so you can see what I was doing. Yeah, then come here, guys. Climb that ladder. Yeah, luckily I remembered that I missed it. Make way over here and loot this item behind these enemies. Yeah, that's a condensed lost shard small. And then drop down here, guys. Once you drop down, you're safe for a moment. You can heal up. Roll into these crates and there will be a awake MJ109. And here, guys, is a rotten missile. Drop down here carefully and then climb back up the ladder. I guess at this point you're probably thinking a lot of these levels are they're like mazes, aren't they? But wait till you find the next proper dungeon. It's a right nightmare trying to get around. It's like a labyrinth. Yeah, smash through these crates, guys, and grab the chocolate garlic flakes. And then drop down this ledge and grab the item here. The blood cartridge times three. I don't really use them, but I'll get them just in case we need them for something later. And I come around this corner and now we're making our way to the final safe point before the boss. Get down this ladder. Here we go guys. We're not fighting the boss just yet though. Just unlock that safe point. And you're going to walk back to home base. We should get our build going in this video by the way. More or less. You'll actually see me upgrade my Zweihander to fortification finally. So I've got 100% blocking when it comes to physical damage. Right, so back at home base, we're going to do some exchanging. Give us some NPCs their favourite valuable. Just give them five points. Some of them, some valuables, the max you can get from them is three points with, you know, the best NPC. So you don't get points from everyone, even when you give it to the person who likes it the most. Yeah, so we'll go over to Coco first. We're going to give her the powerful spices, guys, and the chocolate garlic flakes. Powerful spices and the chocolate garlic flakes. <laughs> they should give her five points each. Yeah, I don't know why chocolate garlic flakes. Who would put garlic with chocolate? I don't know. Coco seems to like it, don't she? Everybody else gets minus five. Yeah, talk to Louis. You want to give him the elegant fountain pen that's yeah give that to him he'll, only give you th he'll get, give you three points for it because he's got no ink left uh, but that's the best you're going to get and then talk to IO guys restore vestige and now you want to restore all your current vestiges that you can you should be able to restore at this time uh, Prometheus vestige 2 Hermes vestige 1 that should get you a trophy as well Davis memories Atlas Vestige 1 as well. Yep, that will get you Yakumo's Memories Trophy. You can also restore Atlas Vestige 2, Assassin Vestige 1, Assassin 2, and Assassin 3. Yeah, so Hermes 1, then you have Atlas 1, Atlas 2, and Assassins 1, 2, 3. Basically, just restore any available ones. Now, you might be able to restore one of the Dark Seeker vestiges. I know I couldn't do it now because I'd, I'd got that item. You know, when I picked up that Dark Seeker vestige part A, I edited that in. So, at this point, when I was recording, I didn't actually have it. So, you might be able to restore the Dark Seeker. It doesn't make, it doesn't make a difference anyway. It's not like it leads us to any um, ability we're going to be using, any gift.
But yeah, once we've restored all these, we're going to go to Davis, get his blood code, Hermes. And um, no, it's not related to the postal courier in any way. And then we're going to head to the depths. Yeah, one thing I say just while we are restoring these. It's when it comes to... I'm, I've got to try and remember this myself, actually. But when it comes to referring to gifts, you know, whether I want you to learn it or um, mastering it. Yeah, it seems when you first when you first purchase a gift to use it to use it at all, even with that blood code, that's called learning. So you normally you can't some gifts you can't use them until you've learned them. And you normally have to pay like a set amount, like nine hundred and twenty Hayes, or there's some for three thousand. Uh, I think for thirty six thousand, there's some for forty eight thousand. Yeah, there'll be some you can't actually use them until you've learned them. So when you first buy them, that'll be learning them. And then when you're actually max proficiency, the game sort of classes that as mastering them. There's another word it uses as well, but it does mention master. Yeah, when you master proficiency. So when it comes to um, going into our blood codes and either learning a gift or mastering it, that's the terms I'm going to use from now on. So just try, if you can't quite see exactly what I'm doing, so I'm a bit too quick. Just remember, learning is when you first buy one and then mastering it's when you first max proficiency. I'll try to remember that myself as well. Yeah, so see, I just scanned over a Dark Seeker, Dark Seeker Vestige. You might have been able to unlock that. Uh, I will be doing it in this video anyway, just be a bit nearer to the end. But yeah, we did get him two trophies as well, guys. Like I said, Davis's Memories and um, Yakumos. There's actually a trophy for Memories with most of your allies. Yeah, the trophy for this is, that's not really the thing what's nice about this is there isn't any like misc trophies you know for getting like 10 kills with this weapon or 10 environment kills there's none of them trophies and I, I actually don't like them trophies that much all the trophies in this are connected to um like collecting something or an ending or killing a boss you know so one good thing about it i know you have to grind but we ain't got to mess about with bloody misc misc combat trophies Take care. Yeah. Missed trophies and grinding are my worst kind of trophies. So um, we're going to come over to Murasami next. If you haven't done so already, hopefully you can up upgrade, well, transform this Vihander to this Vihander fortification now, guys. If you haven't done so already. Hopefully you have, but if you haven't yet, yeah, hopefully you've got enough to do so now. And you come to Davis. He'll give you his Hermes blood code, like I said. And I'm going to... Open this dialogue again. We're going to click on Head to the Depths. And we're going to be going to the Town of Sacrifice. Yeah, good thing about taking a, um, a companion with you. This is all we've got for is you don't have to spend too much time even if you don't kill enemies yourself you're still going to get some haze because your your ally is killing enemies for you along the way that's a good thing about carrying your ally along with you we'd be doing two boss fights in this one by the way two boss fights first one can the first one I always seem to do it first time mo most of the time anyway it doesn't give me too much trouble but second one can be a bit of a pain uh, so once you get here guys, Town of Sacrifice, interact with the missile first to um, activate it, and then take the east path, we want this item, Awake MJ109 times 1, and then we're also going to get Hermes Vestige Part B. Now when you come to get this, it's going to trigger a lost invasion again, where a massive wave of enemies are going to start spawning, here they all come. So at this point that's all we wanted along this east path, so we need to get try to get back to the centre now. You can either use your vivification, if you can, it's just a bit tricky if all these enemies chasing you. The uh, thing is you're not too far away so you, m you might as well just run back on foot and then just rest there to respawn the enemies. Yep, and the next guy's going to take the south path. Down here it's just going to be some, well it's going to be, we're going to get a weapon, Bardisha Gifts times one from the chest and I'm also going to get Bulgur Rally Doll. I get the gift first, not the gift, it's it's a weapon which got, it got it's transformed with the gift 
ability on it basically. Yeah, it's a weapon. But I get this first because when you go for the item, it's going to spawn another lost invasion of thing. I think it does. So yeah, get that first and then make way back around here. And follow my lead to this next item. I say this is a bugger rally doll. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, just like that, it'll trigger a lost invasion, but we want that item. And then either try to walk back or just make way back on foot, guys. Yeah, them dogs are a bit annoying. They don't really give you a chance to do anything. And then what we'll do next is taking the west path, which is one item left to get. And that'll be a RV Mastery 103, which will give you a lightning buff once you use it. Lightning buff passive. Yeah, so west path now. Yeah, just take the first left that you come to and the RV mastery is at the end there. Pick up something we can use. There you go. Because there's no enemies chasing you really here, you can walk town. back. Okay, so once you're back at the missile, guys, you're going to warp to the ruined city underground, the outer crossroads. I've still not mastered the proficiency on the blood sacrifice gift. Some gifts will take ages to master, by the way. You find the, the, the weaker gifts, that you know, the first ones you unlock, or that are already available, they un you can master them really quick, but some other ones, they take ages to master. Like the Blood Sacrifice. But, I mean, I've not really been killing any enemies, and at the end of this next invasion, which we're going to be doing, I should have mastered it, so... If I've mastered it at this point without killing any enemies up to this point, you should have as well, guys, because we're going to need it mastered uh, in order to have it equipped for our next build. That blood sacrifice, you probably want that for every single build you have, just because it gives you a sort of way to get Ikko back without any enemies around. Yeah, so once here, guys, talk to Shang. Good old Shang. Yeah, talk to him, and he'll give you a Lost Shard M as a reward. And then talk to him again and exhaust his dialogue. And then once you've done so, come to the missile and then choose save and return to title screen at the bottom and then reload it back with some of these side quests when you're talking to an NPC to update it to the next stage of this quest their side quest you normally have to leave the reload the area so to do so I've have to warp to a di completely different area I don't mean like a, a different zone within that area you have to warp to a completely different area and then walk back or you can just save and quit like I just did and then continue and that's spawning you back in but that reloads the area and now you can see he's updated his quest now he's standing over here come and talk to him again that will spawn another lost invasion now we're going to kill all these yeah luckily at the end of this my blood sacrifice becomes mastered yeah we don't have to do every single side quest connected to an NPC just some of them so you'll see a lot of NPCs I ignore them when it comes to side quests, but yeah, some of them we do do, mainly because they lead you to a, a depth map. And it's a trophy for visiting every single depth map. Yeah, these loss invasions, they normally spawn about 10, about 10, 15 enemies altogether, probably. And there you go, guys. Yay! I fully mastered Blood Sacrifice, finally. I didn't actually, when, on my first playthrough, I had no idea about a blood sacrifice and it probably, it probably wasn't until the end of my playthrough until I realised how useful that was. Yep, yeah, almost dead, died. I'm bad at this game. The amount of times I actually die properly. Right, so once you beat them all, guys, Sorry, talk to Shang again, you'll get a reward. You'll get a RV Mastery 117 and a Lost Shard Medium. RV Mastery, that gives you the Revenant Dagger, which is pretty pointless. I think it just randomly, it's a passive, which just makes it so your player randomly throws a dagger at an enemy, but daggers do like very little damage. Yeah, and I just used it to learn that ability, that passive gift. Okay, so next guys, come over to the missile. Now we're gonna be doing some acquiring and inheriting gifts. And um, I'll try to do this a bit slowly so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but what you wanna do first of all, 
is when you use that loss shard M times 3 and the condensed loss shard S times 2 which you should have Yeah, so any lost shards, I've got there three no. lost shard mediums and two condensed lost shards small. You should have the same. You get 300 from the medium lost shards. Yeah, I mean, it's not a lot, but it all helps. And you get 1,000 each from each of the condensed lost shards. That'll just give you a bit more haze to play with. It's going to need it now for unlocking these gifts. Okay, so interrupt the missile again. Open the acquire slash generic inherit gifts menu. Go into Berserker. Go into Iron Will. We should have unlock. Uh, we should have learned that earlier, but now we want to master it. You should have enough of the items required to master it. So yeah, master the Iron Will ability in Berserker, and then you want to come into Atlas. You want to unlock Torment and Blast. Just unlock it. Don't master it. Just unlock Torment and Blast. Unlock Guard Drain Rating up. Unlock Foul Blood Barrier. And then also unlock Dogged Fighter. Now just below Dogged Fighter is Two Hand Mastery. And that's a key, that's a key gift for this build. But it costs a lot to unlock it. So we're not going to be doing it just yet. Yeah, then once you're done all that, guys, equip Atlas, the Atlas Blood Coat. You want to equip the GXM variant plus three veil. You can actually upgrade that when we get some items and some haze, spare haze. Yeah, then you want to equip passives. Yeah, you want to equip guard drain rating up. Health boost. Weapon drain rating up. And that other one which I equipped, can't quite see what it was. And then you want to come into your actual gift quick slots, guys, and equip all these ones which I'm doing. Basically, Adrenaline, Iron Will, Restorative Offering, Blood Sacrifice, yep, Vivification, Tormenting Blast. Yeah, you also you also want um, dogged fighter and foul blood barrier. So we're probably going to unequip vivification. Just give us space for that. Yep, yeah, and we want dogged fighter on there as well. Oh, okay. oh, we've still got space for vivification anyway. Yeah, because basically there'll be certain gifts which you want to have equipped because they're they're key they're key gifts you want to be using your build, but. In spare slots, we're just equipping gifts which we can master because there is a trophy for mastering 50 different gifts, I believe. But once they're already mastered, when you unlock a blood code, don't count. You've got to master them yourself. Yeah, so that's just a quick highlight for what I've got equipped, guys. If you want to know exactly, just go into my text guide linked in the description and you'll see. Yeah, the other passive I didn't mention was um, Resilient Focus, guys. Yeah, of course you've got a spy hander. And then once you've got all them equipped guys, you're ready. We're going to walk back to dried up trenches and the frozen seabed. Ready for a boss. So this boss is the insatiable, insatiable Despo. And once you beat him, he'll give you 7,000 haste just over. And the Tyrant's Labris weapon. Now what this boss does, he, he spawns big enemies. But if when he's spawning them, you just attack him, he doesn't spawn them. So as soon as the fight begins, you want to run straight up to him and start attacking him to stop him spawning enemies. And this enemy, this boss, you just want to be really aggressive. Because if he, if he gets a chance to spawn any enemies, it makes the fight a right pain in the ass. Yeah, but what you want to use now, now going forward, remember we've got Atlas Blood Code. Always before battle, trigger Adrenaline, trigger Iron Will. Adrenaline gives you, I think it's 10% extra damage. Iron Will gives you 25% extra defense. And obviously, just make sure you block attacks when he's attacking. And like I say, just go to town on him. Use Tormenting Blast when you can. Tormenting Blast is a really strong gift. Use Charge Attacks. And remember, you can also use Hold 
the ability where you hold, well not the ability, the move, where you hold R1 and press square where you do our thrusting attack. With that you can stay a few steps away from the enemy, out of the range of some of his attacks, and then just do one of them at a time. Retreat, block again, but just remember, hit on him when you can, just to stop him spawning enemies. I think he sticks his weapon into the floor when he's spawning enemies, and you see that red, you see that red sort of aura around him. But you can see he goes down pretty fast with this build. Yeah, we will have more abilities going forward. Your build will get stronger. Yeah, there you go. Get a trophy as well, guys, and save people, Despo. If you've got that passive which I mentioned, Two-Handed Sword Mastery, which is in the Blood Code, in the Atlas Blood Code, yeah, that gives you an extra 20% damage. It's just really expensive, that's why I've not unlocked it yet. But if you wanted to unlock that before this boss, you could just go and grind out some enemies, and you could do so. Okay, so um, Blood Spring, guys, and then get the Dark Seeker Vestige Core. That should unlock the Blood Code, Dark Seeker. There's a trophy for getting all the blood codes, by the way. That's why you need to get them all. Okay, so once you've got that, guys, we're just going to use the vivification to warp back to a safe point. And then back here, we're going to warp to the Howling Pit, bottom of the shore. Ready for another boss. This boss is a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, so Howling Pit, guys, bottom of the shore. This boss will inflict you with slow quite a lot. I don't use it here, but if you want to, we should have quite a lot of the anti-slow items, I think that's the name. Basically, they cure slow, basically like, you know, like the venom, anti-venom we used on the butterfly boss. It cures venom when it inflicts you with it, poison. Anti-slow will cure slow. So you might just want to have them equipped, guys. And if you get hit with slow, you can just use one of them uh, to cure it. But yeah, this boss can be a little bit difficult. A lot of his attacks... You can dodge, you can, sorry, not dodge, of course you can dodge them, but you can block them with your swords, but they take up a lot of stamina. So this boss is quite important, try to keep your stamina full where you can, obviously if you're attacking you're going to lose a bit of stamina, but don't go in for too many attacks. Do one attack or one tormenting blast, and then get back out, build your stamina back up. Uh, but before you go in guys, use adrenaline and iron will again, just like normal. We're doing that quite a lot. You'll find going to start boss fights as our build gets better. We'll just be using loads of gifts before we go into the boss, get them all ready. Yeah, see, I've been hit with slow or well, not quite yet, but you can see the gauge at the bottom building up. Yeah, best not to stand too close to this boss. Take your time. Yeah, see, this is the thrusting ability. Works quite well here. Torment and Blast. Yeah, see my stamina is mega low, you've got to be very, very careful with your stamina. This boss will do like a massive charging attack, and um, if it hits you, if you've got full stamina you can block it, but sometimes it follows you up with another one, and because the first one knocked all your stamina, you have to, that, that attack there, you saw I block it, but the second one connected because I had no stamina left. So you can block it, but you need to be ready to dodge the second one if it does do one. And that does a lot of damage. It can, it can basically one hit kill you sometimes. Yeah, that's what happens if you get too close to this boss. Best to keep your distance and go for thrusting attacks. Or wait for it to attack Yakomo. There you go, yeah, blocked one. And the second one hit me. Didn't even block that time. Yeah, if we had that two-handed sword mash free for this, this would be a lot easier because you'd be doing 20% extra damage. And you'll find a lot of the abilities in this game, the gifts, they don't give like, a lot of them they don't add 20%, they like all multiplies on top of each other. So as soon as, so 20% damage is actually better than it sounds because like I say, they all multiply on top of each other, most of them. It's how you get a lot of these one-shot builds uh, floating around the internet. Because you just stack loads of different buffs and you end up doing like crazy damage. And got it. And that's it guys, the second boss this video. Won't be doing no more. That's the invading executioner boss. You'll get that trophy for it. You get 30,000 haze for beating that one. And you want to be saving up your haze now. If you haven't already, 
brought the um, the two-handed sword mastery gift, guys, in the Atlas Blood Coat. That's what I'm currently saving up for. So do not level up. We need to build. I think it. I think it's forty-eight thousand. It costs, so it's quite a lot. But yeah, we want to get that ready for the next boss in the next video, if we can. Yeah. So after beating that boss, you automatically spawn in home base. You also get the Fion Vestige one. And then once in home base, we're going to go over to Io. I'm going to restore some more vestiges. We're going to restore Hermes, vestige two, and also Dark Seeker, vestige one. Um, I think I think at the end of this video we go and get that missile which I missed in the ruined city center. What exactly is going on here anyway? Why does every blood vein we find lead back to the old city ruins? Yeah, so after cutscenes, guys, a lot of cutscenes in this game. And another one. Like yeah, so Io, restore vestige, and then we'll be giving away some valuables. And I'm going to warp to the dried up trenches. Which are going to do a few side quests. Well, a few steps. Yeah, so Io, what restore them all. If you can't restore these ones, which I am, then it's because you've missed some items somewhere. Yeah, so Hermes, vestige 2. You might notice then that um, Dark Seeker Vestige wasn't available because this is the point when I realised I missed it, uh, but I've edited it in, so now it should there be a little edit, and I've actually got the the item now, which I showed you earlier, so I can now restore it. What is it? Yeah, there it is, little edit. Yeah, there we go, Dark Seeker Vestige one. <laughs> we can now guys I hope I don't do that too often I'm normally pretty good when it comes to you know remembering everything but I must have just missed it I forgot about it somehow okay so once you've restored everything which you can with IO we're going to go and talk to Maya yeah she's a new NPC which will be here now Sorry, you can actually sergeant. have her as a companion now as well yeah, so um, if you exchange gift valuable, guys, uh, and we want to give her the fragrant tea, let me know that'll you give mean. us five points with her. To and come and talk to Murasami and give her the Booger Alley doll. that give her five points as well. Yep, and then like I said, we're going to warp to dried up trenches and the dried up trenches entrance. Yeah, that Mia, there's a DLC version of her. I think it's called the white version where she can use Guardian Aid on you. Um, but Guardian Aid, I think you can, you can combine it with the Juggernaut gift, which we're not going to be getting until uh, probably New Game Plus. But if you can com if you combine the Guardian Aid from the Mia White DLC, along with Juggernaut and a few other things, I think you can get Invincibility, basically because no enemies can damage you. Uh, but like I say, it just don't really help until... You know, unless you've got DLC and uh, you, you need Juggernaut, but we won't be getting Juggernaut until New Game Plus. Um, so once you get here, guys, talk to Gustav, exhaust all his dialogue, and you want to warp to the Howling Pit, Hills of Deception. So yeah, talk to Gustav near near them save points, exhaust his dialogue, guys, and then Howling Pit, Hills of Deception. Yeah, one thing about side quests, there's not really, there's no, like, quest menu. In the inventory so it's it's quite tricky to know when you've moved a quest forward and when you haven't or you know when a quest becomes available somewhere but yeah once you get here guys talk to Richard nearby and after talking to him and you've exhausted his dialogue you'll see that item start flashing on the map to the north and we're gonna go and pick that up now it's a sleeping bag yeah threadbare sleeping bag pick it up and then return to Richard and exhaust his dialogue again. He'll give you a Lost Shard Large as a reward, and that should update his side quest ready for later. Like I say, all these side quests, we're just doing them because they lead you to depths maps. Okay, so once you've done that, guys, got Lost Shard 
L and exhausted this dialogue, you want to walk to the ruined city centre, the parking garage. And then once you spawn in here, we're going to go up the ramp and get the citizen's opinions item from the top. That's related to a side quest. I think, is it if it's is it for Sha No, it's for Gustav, that's it. Trying to remember. Yeah, Gustav basically wants you to find three or four items. Um, but you can find all of them before you go back to him. And then advance it then Sorry. rather than take one at a time. Just find them all and then go back to him and they can move his quest along. But basically be one in each area. There'll be one here, there's one a bit later. But we'll find them all as we go anyway. Obviously I'll point them all out. Yeah, so that one guys, Citizen's Opinions. Come up here and get that. And then walk back to the save point. Back at the save point, talk now. Talk to the self-important revenant nearby. We're going to advance his quest line. Yeah, talk to him and you'll notice that spawns another icon on the map. It's basically spawned a enemy we're going to be going fight soon. But just exhaust this dialogue, get the icon to appear, and then we're going to come down here, guys, where we came earlier. We're just going to get that rotten missile, which I forgot. Yeah, you might want to have shift in hollow, um, quick slotted, so you can, you know, dash quicker and avoid enemies if you get stuck in a combo. Yeah, shift in hollow comes in really useful for exploration. Just if you find yourself in a pinch and you've got tons of enemies attacking you, you shift in hollow and it gets you out of danger. If you can find a moment to use it. Yeah, so here guys, that rotten missile, that's it, we should be 100% map now. And then walk back to the save point. Well, once back at the save point, we're going to warp to the park ruins next. Same area, just a different zone. Yeah, park ruins. Because this is where that enemy is, where self-important revenant triggered when we spoke to him. You see him just to the southwest. So just use your buffs, adrenaline, along with iron will, and then come around and kill him. Yeah, with normal enemies, you can't do it on bosses, but normal enemies you can backstab. And to backstab, you need to get behind him and press square. If you're not in the right place, you'll do a normal attack. Yeah, so there it is, backstab. It's a bit tricky to do. I mean, you, you, you near enough have to be right behind an enemy, like in a specific spot. So it can be a bit annoying trying to figure out where. But if you just move around normal enemies, around the back, and then press square when you're near enough at the back, and uh, most of the time you'll do it. Uh, but once you killed it, loot the lost shard large from it. And then come back to the save point guys and warp back to the parking garage. Yeah, good thing about the backstabs though, they do a lot of damage. And when you're while you're doing the animation, you're invincible, so nothing can damage you. Yeah, so talk to self-important revenant again, guys. He should give the lost shard a medium. And then keep talking to him to exhaust his dialogue. And then walk back to park ruins. Yeah, now all we're going to do, guys, is going to get to the next area, ready for the next video. So back to Park Ruins, head north, and we're going to come down this ladder, which we didn't actually come down earlier. You probably noticed this, and maybe did come down here, uh, but I left this item for now. Yeah, so grab this item, it's the Prometheus Vestige, Part D, and then interact with the statue. Interacting with the statue after defeating them bosses, which we have, at this point in the story, will make a ladder behind you fall down. Yep, and then just continue the path, guys, into the next area. Yeah, this next area, you've got Bloodspring there first, which you can activate. Well, approach for a cutscene. Yeah, this next area is... Yeah, of course, I know you're going to compare it to Anor Lando. But it's like a maze. The areas... There's loads of different elevations. Um, there's, there's towers that connect them all. You have to drop down to get in another entrance. There'll be shortcuts. And it's a lot of like dropping down, coming back on yourself. You know, it's quite it's quite confusing. The map doesn't really help because the map doesn't really show elevations. You know, way. but um, hopefully the you know me showing you will make it coming this guide coming really useful for getting around. Hopefully we'll get through it quite quick. But you find the enemies here as well in this next dungeon. They they teleport around, so they're quite a little bit harder to run past. 
So you might find that some of the enemies here I do actually just kill. Yeah, they, they basically teleport, but they teleport and then they drop on you from above. And because they're coming from above, you can't block it. Because it's like a it's a vertical attack, you can't block it. Uh, but once you get this ladder, guys, turn around and come to this little alcove. You find plasma cartridge times three. But most importantly, you'll find a depths map, flood of impurity. Pick that up, guys, and then continue along here. We're going to get a next save point. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, very familiar territory for those of you that have played Dark Souls. How do you make something this big? I think most RPGs have an area like this now, and we always compare it to Dark Souls. Look at that crater. Yeah, so save point, and then that will be it for that video, guys. Ready to make a crack on with this dungeon in the next one. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you on part four.